We thank God for this Sunday. The Lord is good. If you are doubting, I'm here to testify that the Lord is good. And his mercies endure forever. Even when you don't feel like it is true, I want to testify that it is true. And there are moments he's working behind the scenes. You may not be able to see it, but he's still working on your behalf. Hallelujah. As I stand here, I want to thank God for our bishop and our mom in absentia. Um, they are fine. Um, and they send their love to us, Vanessa Sifiwe. And uh, they are doing very, very well. They are out of the country. And uh, they'll be coming back soon. Buona Sifiwe. Amen. And uh, I want to also appreciate my husband who is in the house. An amazing young man. <laughs> Amen. If you think we are old, he is a very young man. <laughs> Amen. We thank God. Now, um, last week we began on a series. My name is Millicent Kaunda. For those who could be new in this place, Millicent Kaunda is my name. I'm a wife. And I'm a mother of two young adults, a young man who is 26 and a young lady who is 23. And we bless the Lord because the two are great nations and the world is yet to see what will come through them. Hallelujah. Amen. Last Sunday, we began on a series that our bishop introduced, and it is the series on giving. 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 And Bishop took us through um, the first aspects of giving. And today, we want to look at another aspect, which is giving begins with the heart. Giving begins with the heart. It does not begin with the pocket. It begins with the heart. A story is told in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, a time when the Israelites were in captivity and the Lord had already orchestrated that they were going to be delivered. And so God sent Moses to Pharaoh and Moses went to Pharaoh and started telling Pharaoh that the Lord has said, let my people go. And Pharaoh was wondering, these people who have served us for 400 years, and 30 years, where are they going? Then Moses said, let, God is saying, let my people go so that they can go and worship the Lord. And at some point, to cut the long story short, at some point, Pharaoh said, they can go, but only the men should go. And Moses said, no, we are going with our wives and we are going with our children. Then Pharaoh got another loophole there and said, then you can go with your wives and your children. Of, of first, they were told they can go with their wives, but the children will be left behind. And you know, when you leave your children behind, you can never settle where you are. If you're a parent and you've gone on a trip, you have a young child in the house, you always try your level best to come back to them. And so when Pharaoh was saying they can go with their wives but leave their children behind, it, the main thing he was saying, your heart will still be in Egypt. And so at some point then, after being pressurized, he says, let them go. We, you can go with your wives and with your children, but leave your cattle behind and your property behind. But Moses said, we are going with everything that is ours. We are not leaving a hoof behind. And many times as Christians, the enemy would have us go as men, but leave our wives behind. Go as women, but leave our husbands behind and our children behind. And better still, he can cheat us to such an extent that we are able to carry our children along. We are telling our children about the Lord Jesus Christ, but he is not willing to let us go with our wallets. 
Bwana asifiwe. Ask your neighbor, did you come with your wallet to church today? Kama umesahau home. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Why was Moses insisting? Moses knew that if you love the Lord with all your heart, your mind and strength, there is nothing that can be left behind. And so today, we want to look at this aspect, giving that begins with the heart. Giving that begins with the heart. And when we look at the aspect of giving, the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean God our, God, our Father, actually modeled it for us. When the Bible says in John 3, 16, maybe we can get that one. John 3, 16, if we are able to get it. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave, meaning love is normally depicted by giving. You cannot say you love me and you're not giving me. I cannot say I love my husband and I'm not able to give my total self to him. And so when we are saying we love the Lord Jesus Christ, then what that means, if we love him with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our strength, it means we are willing to go all the way and give him everything that we have. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Can we read together? One, two. Tusome vizuri. Tusome vile bishop huwa nasema tutumie nini? School fees. <laughs> okay, let's go one, two. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudging or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. In other words, by the time you are walking out of your house to come into church, you have already purposed what you are coming to give. You are not looking for it in your wallet as if it's lost. You already purposed, you prepared it, you prayed over it so that you're not coming giving grudgingly yeah, or giving of necessity. You're not coming waiting for someone to stand on this altar and say, there are a hundred people here with 10,000 in their pockets. The Lord is saying, the Lord is, now those are gymnastics. And I normally say, any preacher who stands and starts saying those kind of things, imagine I will not give. Why? Because the Lord should have spoken to you. I'm not coming here to manipulate you. That is manipulation. Hallelujah. And many times people come rushing because they're imagining the servant of God has seen my account. So you go clearing your account to give. And you know what you have done? You have given of necessity. You have given of necessity. You've not given out of love. Scripture is telling us that everyone should give as they had purposed in their heart. We can have that scripture again up there. As they had purposed in their, in their hearts. Meaning, it is something that sprang forth from our hearts to be able to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. So what we are saying is, it starts with the heart. God is a lot more interested in your willingness to give than in your wealth. Can I repeat that? God is more interested in your willingness and in my willingness to give than he is in our wealth. In any case, he is wealthy. The Bible talks of it in the book of Haggai that th a thousand cattle on the hills belong to him. Silver and gold belong to him. And so when we are giving to him, we are not giving because he is hungry and broke. God, I can't get you broke. You give because you love him. He is interested more in what is happening in your heart when you're giving. And no wonder... It's interesting that scripture says that Jesus was sitting by the treasury one day 
when people were giving in the temple. You wonder why was it seated in the high seats of the temple? Because there must have been high seats in the temple. He wasn't seated in the high seat. But he was seated at the treasury. And as people came giving, he saw a woman who only had two pence give. I want to believe that before he noticed this woman, there were men, wealthy men, who passed and gave in millions. There were wealthy women who passed and gave in millions. But there was this poor woman who only had two pence, but she came cheerfully because she knew she had given sacrificially. There was nothing that was left. And therefore, giving is not a matter of how much you have or how much you have given. It is an attitude of the heart. It's an attitude of the heart. So you must decide in your heart how much to give. Do not give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Can I repeat that? Don't give in response to, to what? To pressure. Because sisi wachungaji sa zingine tunaeza pressurize wase. Mwana asifiwe. It is good. You know what the Bible says. Do not give in response to pressure and do not give reluctantly. And no wonder Bishop stood here last Sunday and say, if you are coming to give grudgingly, do not give. Give cheerfully. Give cheerfully. Now, giving begins with a cause. Giving begins with a cause. And I want us to look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. Matthew 10, 28 to 29. It says, and do not fear. Is it Matthew? Sorry, Mark. Mark 10, 28 to 29. Thank you. Then Peter began to say to him, to who? To Jesus. So they are having a conversation as they are walking with Jesus. So Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. Verse 29. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Let's go on. 30. Do we have? Mm -hmm. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, and children and lands with persecutions in the age to come, eternal life. Born as if he were. So the Lord is saying, there's nobody who has given up everything, given him everything, who will not receive a hundredfold now. Does it say tomorrow? It says now. It may not have been manifested physically, but it has already happened in the spiritual realm and it is awaiting the opportune time so that you can receive it. The disciples gave up everything to follow him. They left behind their homes, their jobs, and security to follow a carpenter. At that time, he was just a carpenter. Apart from him having introduced them, uh, himself to them, when he came and he told them, I am the light of the world, it was just by faith. They had not yet seen him glorified. All they knew about him was that he was a son of a carpenter and he used to help his father. But they left everything to follow him. Why would men give up everything to follow just a normal man like Jesus? Because they were captured with a cause. There's something they saw in him that captivated them. There's something 
they saw in his lifestyle that made them believe that surely this man is what he says he is. This man is what he says he is. There was a cause that captured them, that made them follow him. The kingdom of God was at hand and the son of God was in their midst. They wanted to be a part of the life-changing cause. Turn to your neighbor and you ask them, why did you come to church this morning? Ask them, did you come to church because it's a Sunday? You know, as we grew up, we knew Sunday was a day of church. Actually, we even had a Sunday best. So maybe we came to church because it is a Sunday. <laughs> but how I pray that God will help you and me that we will come to church because we believe in a cause. There is something that we have seen that causes us to wake up on a Sunday morning, on a chilly morning like today, and rush into church. For these disciples, they had seen this man. By this time that they were beginning to follow Jesus, remember Jesus had already turned water into wine. And they were like, wow, what manner of a man is this? By this time when Jesus is speaking them, he had already made that woman who was double bent to start walking straight. And they realized this is not an ordinary man. He is a man worth leaving our homes for. He is a man worth leaving our jobs for. He is a man worth leaving our careers for. Let's follow him so that we can be a part of this cause. Are you a part of a cause? Hallelujah. When we stand here, or when Bishop stands in this place and talks of five campuses, does it capture you? When we stand here and we are saying we are going for a prayer walk, Zimmerman for Jesus, does it capture you? Because it's until it captures your heart that you will reach out into your pocket and give. If it does not capture, it will be very difficult for you to give. Why do you belong to Deliverance Church? Is there a cause to follow? The disciples saw a cause. The early church saw a cause. And they decided they were going to be totally sold out. Such that irrespective of the torture, the beatings that they received. The Bible talks of it in the book of Acts. That Paul and Silas would be beaten and left for the dead. But they would wake up. Yeah, they'd wake up with wounds and still talk about this Jesus. Hallelujah. Still go on preaching about this Jesus. They went through what we'd really call persecution. Because someone has talked behind your back. Yeah, how many sengenya? Sita rudi hiyo church. Bona yeso asifiwe. Aliniangalia vimbaya. Sita rudi hiyo church. Now those are petty things. Tell your neighbor that's a petty thing. There is something bigger that is found in following the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the question is, are you ready to follow him with your everything? Is your heart totally sold out? Is your heart totally sold out? When you're asking God for prosperity, and I know we normally pray. Yeah? We have walked to the altar very many times. And we are telling God, God, my, and my God shall supply to all my needs according to his riches in glory. Haven't we prayed about that? Very many times. When we come to the altar and we are praying. Have you ever asked yourself, why am I asking for prosperity? For what? Because that's what the spirit of God would want to ask. What is your motive? In your heart, if I bless you, the Lord would be asking today, then what? Also what? It 
begins with a motive in our hearts. The Bible says in Psalms 122 verse 9, we can have that and I want us to read it together. Can we read it together? Um, let's look at King James Version. Not New King James. King James Version, I think. Psalms 122 verse 9. Okay, it's still the same. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. There is one that says, because of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. If you get it, you'll put it up for us. Because of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. In other words, when I'm going before the Lord to ask for that prosperity, to ask for a financial breakthrough, thank you, it is in NIV, it says, for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. In other words, we are telling God, if you prosper me, I'll be a blessing to someone else. The motive of the heart. Not if you prosper me, I will buy a V8. A V8 is an additive. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added to you. So the main thing is seeking the kingdom of God and his Righteousness. In other words, ensuring that your heart and my heart are in right standing with God. Then the rest of the things, like a singer once sang and said, Itako ugali sosa. Maybe the young generation, awaji ugali sosa ninini. Let me explain. <laughs> we grew up, or rather, I grew up in Eastlands. Eastlands, Neo Maineo, Yaisli, Jericho, Huko. And uh, you'd go to a place. Nowadays, it's your nyingi sana. It's a place that's joined to the network kiosk. Mwana sefiwe. Ama kiyo there. For those of Eastlands, know that. So, you'd go there and you'd ask for ugali mandondo. And they'd slice a piece of ugali for you and give you with mandondo. Mandondo ni beans, for those who don't know. Yes, and so you'd eat this ugali and you realize that madono ime bakimob. Sasawa. But the ugali is gone. So you call the waiter, no mwambie waiter, naomba ugali nini? Sosa, ama chaichoma. Yakufanya nini? Yakumalizia mandondo. That's what we call ugali sosa. Now, you could not walk into a kiosk and ask for ugali sosa Unless you had already purchased the main meal. Bonus if you will. The ugali sosa was given to those who had purchased the main meal. Ama chai choma, chai ime, ime po, ime fika nusu. So in a chomelewa so that it can be hotter, you continue taking. Bona yesu as if you will. Now, in the kingdom of God, all these other things that we are seeking for come because we have already taken the main course, which is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so when you seek the kingdom of God, it means when he blesses you with those finances, because God will not drop angels to come and finance the work of the ministry in DCIK or wherever you are. He uses people. He will use you and he will use me. And by the way, even pastors give. And so he will use you and I to be able to grow the ministry where you are. And so the first thing that should come into my mind when the Lord blesses me with finances or whichever other gifts, because there are times when it's not only finances, he will bless you with other gifts and you will look at the house of God and see a need somewhere. He has given you so that that need you are seeing, you will be able to be the one 
to meet it. Bwana sifiwe. The rest of the things will come kama ugali. Nambia jirani usiitishe ugali sasa na uja haujakula. Giving begins in the heart. When we are kingdom investors, we can easily ask God to prosper us for the sake of the kingdom. There's a scripture that we normally love quoting in Philippians, and my God shall supply all bonasifiwe. Actually, can we have that scripture? It is not all my needs. Hallelujah. It is not all my needs. Can we have the scripture? Philippians. Philippians. Chapter 4. I think it's verse 19. Hallelujah. Tukipata, tutaipata. And this was a scripture. Thank you. Tunona mai mahali. Can we read it together? <laughs> and my God shall do what? Supply all according to in by Christ kuna mahali kuna all my needs. Bonesa zifiwe. It is all your needs. This was Paul speaking. Just keep it there for a bit. This was Paul speaking concerning the Philippians. And why was he speaking? It was because the Philippians had given and given and given to him. You can at your own time just go and read chapter 4. The whole of chapter 4. They had given towards his missions. You know. Towards, um, uh, towards him and even towards Jerusalem. To help him in his missionary work. And so he gets to a point where he is saying. And my God because you have given. And you have walked with me in this missionary journey. You have walked with me to help me fulfill. Or to help the gospel be spread. Bread. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And so that scripture, it is not all my needs. Uh -uh. It is all your needs. And let me tell you something. It will be your needs if you have given for the furtherance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ukisikia kuna watu wanaenda mission. Because you, you know you are not able to go. Maybe because of your work schedule. Then you decide, watch how I'm a missionary. Wapate he, perchance when they get to Trukana, they'll be able to take a cup of tea. At that point, and my God shall all your needs. When you have given towards the in-gathering and the people, the, our daughters and our sisters who have been walking up Mirema Drive naked in the night and you have given the in, for the in-gathering, we put a cathedral at Shiloh and they are able to come in and worship. Therefore, we'll be able to say, and my God shall supply all your needs. One is what if you. So needs will be supplied According to his riches. And God is not debtor of a person. He is not a debtor of a person. He will supply. When you bring in that person into your house. You give them a cup of tea. Though they look like they may not be able to give you back that cup of tea. But they were needy. You preach the gospel to them. And you have blessed them with maybe clothes on their backs. Then my God shall supply to all your needs. According to his riches in glory. And this is a principle. Can be a Jirani principle. In the kingdom, there are principles. There are principles. To Saidiane Hapaleo, Boneso Sifiwe. Poverty cannot be overcome by prayer. Can I repeat that? Poverty can never be overcome by prayer. I love prayer. I'm an intercessor. But poverty can never be overcome by prayer. Poverty will only be overcome if you plug into the principle. And the principle is giving. It's like saying you want the area of a circle. 
area of us ako tulikuwa kwa tukisema ni formula gani? Pi r squared. Sindio? Pi r squared. You cannot sit in an exam room and begin praying so that you can get the area of a square. You will have to put the principles and the formulas in place for you to get an answer. Am I right? Yes. And the same thing is with giving. If you want God to remove lack and poverty, then plug into the principle of doing what? Giving. And that's the reason because for a period of time, I was wondering, God, I have been praying, praying, but I'm not getting out of this place. Praying, I'm not. And I started wondering, God, Kwani, you are unfair. How come the Muslims are prospering? How come the Asians are prospering? Why are they living large? Early this year, I remember I traveled when we went to Dubai and those people are living large. Eh? Wanaishi vikubwa, for lack of a better word. You know, you look at the vehicles that they use for their Ubers and you're wondering, a G-Wagon, Tesla. Is on Uber. Bonas was if you. And I start, I, I kept wondering, God, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord started speaking to me and reminding me. The first thing that the Lord spoke to me was, Have you seen any beggar in the streets of Dubai? I did not see any. I did not see a, be a beggar. And I remember reaching out and asking, why are there no beggars here? I was only there for one week. Why are there no beggars here? And this is what they said. It's an insult to the Islamic faith to be eating when there is a neighbor who is in luck. They take care of their beggars. They clothe their beggars. They house their beggars. And you know because they have plugged into that principle, since it is a principle, a principle, anybody who applies that principle gets the answer. Hallelujah. So giving begins in the heart. That's a story for another day. Giving entails sacrifice. And sacrifice is that thing that touches your heart. That thing that touches your heart. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 28, Matthew 20, 28 says, excuse me, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. He came to serve. And when you're giving, you are serving. You may not be in the worship team, but you gave. You worshipped and you served. Giving entails a sacrifice. Hallelujah. It entails a sacrifice. And a sacrifice is a worship. We normally sing a song here. That I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. And I am your worship. In other words, I'm bringing my total self to you. With everything that I am and everything that I have, I am bringing myself to you. I am not opening the wallet while the, the, while, uh, the Lord is seated, assuming he was to sit next to you. Angalia yokiti yiko next to you. Uangalia ujirani. Assuming it was the Lord seated there. I am not turning my coat away from the Lord so that I can remove the least. I am giving my total self. Giving entails a sacrifice. Giving entails a sacrifice. Giving leads to life. Giving leads to life. Now, in, the, in Israel, in Israel, fresh water comes from a brook and fills the Sea of Galilee. 
Now when that we are looking at geography now. There is a brook that normally has fresh water and it flows and fills the Sea of Galilee. Now this body of water, the Sea of Galilee, normally is very fruitful. It has fish in it. It has fish in it. You can trust. I'll always talk about fish. Amen. It has fish in it. Now the Sea of Galilee takes that water and gives it to the Jordan River. When it receives, that is the Sea of Galilee, when it receives water from that brook, it has an outlet that takes the water to the Jordan River. Hallelujah. Takes the water to the Jordan River. And the famous river uses its water to turn the desert into a rose and makes it a land that is flowing with milk and honey. You know what? Israel is a desert. But because of this principle that we are talking about, when the water gets into the Jordan, then it is what is used for irrigation. And that is why they have food security. Why? Because there is a brook that is willing to give and then a sea that receives and gives. But still in the land of Israel, we have another sea that is called the Dead Sea. Kazi yake ni kupokea tu. Aitowi. Inapokea tu. Aitowi. And because it does not have an outlet, this is what happens. The deposits that are found there become saline, become salty. And therefore there is no life in that sea. Bwana sifiwe. Now, when we become givers, we receive, we give. We receive, we give. Definitely we will have some to use for ourselves, but we receive, we give. We not only are giving life, but we are also receiving life. We not only are giving life, but we are also receiving life. Gets to a point when if you are not giving you become so saturated until you start dying on the inside. I don't know. One day, my son came home from college and he passed through town. Uh, He was in Westlands uh, schooling. He passed through town and he found this young boy who came asking for anything to eat, not for money, anything to eat. He had a little money, and so he walked into the nearest shop. He wanted to buy for himself a donut, najuo, wanasifiwe, juice. But when he saw this kid, the young boy, he decided to hold the hand. Definitely he was looking dirty. And akaingia nae kwa hiyo shop, aka buy the donut and the juice and gave it to him. And then got into a matatu and came back home. The whole day, all that my son was talking about was what he did. He was feeling so joyful that at least he touched a life. I don't know about you. When you are able to give, it gives a certain fulfillment. Because human beings were meant to give. We are supposed to be givers. So giving produces Joy. Giving produces joy. You want to be joyful, and I'm winding up. You want to be joyful in this season? Give. You want to be full of life and give life? Give. You want to live a life of sacrifice? Give. And the Lord, who is faithful, will supply to all your needs according to his riches, in glory. He watches his word to perform. He has exalted his word above his name. And so when you have given, then you have a right to go back to God and tell him, Father, I gave. Provide for me. Hallelujah. Father, I gave. I gave my tithe. I know it's going to help someone come to the kingdom. Now provide for me. And because the Bible says in the book of Matthew 6, 33, that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be done what? Shall be added to you. 
Are you trusting God for a home? It is an addition. Are you trusting God for a, uh, for a car? It is an addition. Are you trusting God for good clothes? It is an addition. Addition, addition, addition. If you want to live, and I, the first time I had that, that concept, it was from Bishop JB, and I wondered. Because I was like, Magari zimekuwa additions. And I sought to find out additions, Aje. Our bishop never buys cars. But doesn't he drive good ones? Wouldn't I want to drive the same? Kwanza ndizo machine, you know? Those ones that we call Gari za watu wa? Wazima. Bwana sifiwe. I also want that. And therefore, for me to get that, then I must follow suit and live the kind of life that he has been living. A life of doing what? Of giving. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful. If you could just rise up on your feet as we pray together and ask the Lord, God, I open myself to you. I give myself away. I am withholding nothing. I am withholding nothing. You could just lift your voice and just give him a total surrender. Total surrender to him. Many times we say we are withholding nothing, but our wallets we have withheld. We are withholding nothing, yet we are not able to give our total self. And so I just want you to take a chance right now and tell the Lord, I am giving everything to you, everything to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you today and we are withholding nothing. We give our total self to you. We give our hearts to you, Jehovah God. All that we have and all that we are, today we are giving to you, our King. We want to pray that Jehovah, you will walk through with us, our Father. Oh God, where we have been of little faith, we pray that you'll help our unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give everything to you in the name of Jesus. And maybe you're in this place and even your heart, you have not given to the Lord. I want to ask the ministry team briefly to just walk to the front. You want to connect. Walk and tell the Lord. You want to connect with someone. Just walk and tell the Lord, here I am. Or maybe there has been just a little disobedience. Maybe because you did not know the concept of giving, the principle of giving. You can just walk and tell, share it so that you can pray together with those that are standing here today. In the name of Jesus. I surrender all.